Hi there and aloha folks and welcome to another update on the volcanic eruptions that have been going on at the Kilauea volcano on the island of Hawaii. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Saturday, May 24th. And before I head out for my trip to Iceland and the Alps, I thought I'd throw together one more update on Kilauea and hopefully um, that will help a little bit because the last one I did was uh, almost a month ago, April 29th. I think it's, I, I feel bad saying this, but I feel like we've become a little bit complacent and routine with these eruptions and um, they're spectacular. I think in any given other point in time, we would maybe treat these with a little bit more uh, reverence and awe, I suppose, but because we've seen these spectacular eruptions, we're, on, we're expecting episode 23 anytime today or tomorrow. Um, I certainly feel like I have been maybe a little bit less diligent about following this than I should have. So apologies for that, but let's go ahead and look at what's been going on at Kilauea. And so we're expecting episode 23 to begin either today or tomorrow based on the USGS data and these somewhat episodic fountaining uh, events that have been going on since December 23rd. That's when this whole thing started off. Uh, the prior episode, episode 22, had uh, spectacular fountains up to 1,000 feet or so, 300 meters. So I'm checking in on these things almost every day. I'm just not always doing the video updates, but I wanted to circle back and get something prepared for you. Um, so we have the webcam image there, and the USGS now has three different webcams you can watch the eruption at live, and so I'll make sure those uh, links are under the video description. If we, if we scroll back here, this is a view excuse me, looking, I think, down um, from the north side of the caldera, kind of looking to the, the south, southwest, um, at the two vents sort of stacked in, in line here. Uh, but if we go back a few hours or so, you can see there's still glow coming up from these vents, actually some flames that I'll, I'll show you some video of a little bit, and also some small minor spatter. And so that north-south vent complex is still uh, going going off, but what we're really expecting here, you're like, well, why isn't that episode 23? What we're sort of expecting is the more sustained high fountaining that's come to characterize a lot of these eruptions here at Kilauea. So here's uh, camera one and its view, just so you kind of know the options here. Camera two looks across the caldera uh, from, this is where the main uh, visitor viewpoint is, to the, I guess, southeast, and we're looking to the west. You can kind of see the bulk of Mount Aloha there in the background. Again, kind of going back in time. You might not see the glow here because you're a lot further away, and that glow's kind of down in those craters. Um, but when it's fountaining, this is a nice view to get because you can kind of see the perspective. You can get a view of the height of the fountains a little bit better as well. But right now, you're just seeing a lot of gas coming out of those vents because that magma is close to the surface, but not quite uh, coming out of the vents per se. And then uh, this is probably the best view in terms of being close up. This is camera three uh, looking at the two vents from a vantage point, I guess, to the south, looking to the north, I believe. And so if we scroll back a little bit here, again, you can see those two vents, the north and south vents. Um, with some of that glow, very strong glow, because those that lava is very close to the surface, and then the gases kind of rising there. So those are the the webcam views uh, as we await, await the next big fountaining event. So if you're on the island today or tomorrow, um, I would definitely um, keep checking and try to catch an eruption if you're there uh, and let Kilauea put on a, a spectacular show for you. Um, in terms of where all this is happening, just as a review, we have this area here um, at the west or southwest end of Halema Uma'u uh, crater within the greater uh, Kilauea caldera. And so this is where all the action's been since December 23. We have these, these twin vents here um, at the west end of the crater. And the lavas from these have been um, spreading out across the crater floor. Of course, the fountaining has produced uh, a lot of tephra, Pele's hair, frothy pieces of reticulite and basalt, scoria, that have been scattered, uh, especially on this western rim of the cr crater here, and oftentimes even uh, along the south rim a little bit as well, just depending on the wind patterns. Um, dominantly when it's trade winds, we're getting a lot of that blown out here 
uh, out into the southwest rift zone. Um, so that's the location. And then at the bottom here with this updated map from the USGS, they have uh, some of the, the numbers associated with this eruption, which I thought were interesting. So eruption statistics through episode 21. So this is uh, pretty much... Uh, up till this last episode, episode 22. Maximum lava thickness of 213 feet or 65 meters. So that's a pretty substantial amount of lava there. Probably closest to the vent, I would imagine, is where they're, they're getting that, that maximum thickness. Total lava extent in terms of lava flow covering the crater floor, uh, 816 acres or 330 hectares. Uh, and then the total lava volume in terms of how much lava has been pumped out since December 23rd. And again, this is goes up to almost the most recent episode, uh, about almost 25 billion gallons or 93 million cubic meters. Uh, to give that some perspective, because, you know, those are huge numbers that most of us can't put our brains around. Uh, that's actually about... Um, 37,854 Olympic sized swimming pools. So that's a tremendous amount of lava that's come out of these vents uh, since this last eruptive phase began on December 23rd of this past year. Um, it'll be interesting to see like how that calculates and looks compared to uh, other eruptive phases at Kilauea. Is this a, a high, uh, my, my sense and my guess is this is a very high volume output uh, eruptive phase compared to many of the other ones we've seen. But um, we'll talk in the end here a little bit about like where this is going and, and, and how this could play out long term. Let's check out the latest uh, update from the USGS. This is from Friday, May 23rd. We'll put out another one later today at some point. Um, let's see. So we still have the two vents going off here. I think the, the biggest thing here is going down to the analysis section. Uh, episode 22 ended on May 16th. Rapid rebound of tilt at the end of that episode from deflation to inflation, along with persistent strong glow, indicates magma remains shallow in both the north and south conduits. Based on current rates of inflation, episode 23 is likely to begin in the next one to three days between today, meaning Friday, and Sunday. This estimate will be refined as more data becomes available. So we'll have to see with today's update if they if they change that at all. But basically today, Saturday, or tomorrow, Sunday, look like the two most likely days for that sustained fountaining event to take place, which is sort of the, the highlight of these each each of these phases of this eruption uh, progression that's been going since December is we're getting that high fountaining event. And sometimes like with this last one, episode 22, we get those fountains uh, well above the actual rim of the crater up to about a thousand feet or 300 meters or so. Pretty spectacular uh, visual when, you, when you're there. A couple of the images from uh, the USGS over the past um, few eruptions. Here's May 16th. Um, Really nice fountaining there. Again, you can see the fountaining is pretty much up to the rim of the crater. Uh, this is looking to the, I guess, southwest or so. And then you can see the lava spilling out from those two vents and flowing out across the crater flow floor here. So really nice images there from the USGS. Uh, you can check all these out here. I won't go through all of them. Uh, nice little fern coming up through some of the, the tephra there that's kind of buried it. Um, so you can see these little... Uh, kind of honey flavored pieces of reticulite, the tephra, this foamy lava that's been thrown out by the eruptions and the fountaining that's been going on there. Um, let's see, maybe one more. Let's go to, let's go here to the next page. Uh, great photos too, by the way. Um, if you need like a fun little, I don't know, maybe a wall calendar or something, they have a fun little compilation showing all the eruptive phases, at least up through 20. So this isn't totally up to date. Um, but there's, you know, all the faces of each Kilauea eruption uh, since December 23rd of, of last year. So a nice little compilation there of different phases of the eruption. And then just lots of great photos of the scientists at work. We've got one here with a, a rainbow in the background, which is pretty spectacular. That would make a really nice uh, poster on the wall. That's a really cool shot. Um, and then videos, they've got some nice videos here. Uh, the flaming that we saw with the webcam, we have a, a nice video that shows this. This is actually some of the hydrogen gas that comes from the, the gases coming up with the magma. Um, they're actually quite flammable. And so those can actually uh, 
ignite and create some of this flame here. So that's actually the ignited hydrogen gas from the, the eruption as these vents are degassing. So pretty cool video there. Um, something you don't always see at these uh, volcanic vents, but an, a behavior that exists and is, is common enough, I suppose. Uh, let's see, anything, anything else on the video front? Um, oh, this one's pretty cool here. Let's check out one more video and then we'll go look at the monitoring data. So this is episode 18 uh, going back to late April, but a really nice video that shows the um, extent of the fountaining and good lighting conditions with this helicopter overflight. So you can see the fountaining there uh, nearly up to or pretty close to the, the rim. That's from the, the south vent. There's the north vent there also erupting, but not quite fountaining as high. Uh, here's part of the old crater rim drive road here in the bottom left corner and a big, the big collapse section from the 2018 collapse. A really spectacular fountaining there. A little closer view of the same behavior, the outgassing. A uh, really nice eruption here at the end of April. So they've got lots of videos, lots of photos there. So while you're waiting for the next event, uh, if you need to get your lava fix and get some lava therapy going, you can check out some of the videos and the photos from the USGS. Uh, let's check out monitoring real quick before we wrap this up. So make that all a little bit bigger. Um, so past month data, uh, earthquakes have been pretty quiet. Uh, we have those deeper Pahala quakes over here associated with the, the, the hotspot mantle plume. Um, but on Kilauea itself, here's the Kilauea summit. That's where the activity is taking place. This is the, the whole south flank that's slowly collapsing into the sea. So earthquakes are quite common here. But the earthquake counts in total um, aren't really high. It's sort of like business as usual type quakes you can see again those Pahala quakes located over here so this is by longitude so this is just sort of a cross section uh, in terms of location east to west uh, here's your uh, volcano or excuse me earthquakes happening on the Kilauea south flank uh, when we look at just earthquake counts over time we see it kind of coming and going but if we look at that in conjunction with this graph here which shows by date so you can see these are kind of lined up uh, you can see a, a spike here in mid-May that corresponds mostly to this kind of uptick in earthquake magnitude and frequency from these deeper seated quakes underneath Pahala. Um, and then kind of things are like not a lot of quakes happening in this kind of interval here from, you know, I guess mid-May back to early May or so. Then another little uptick over here where, the, where things go a little bit higher. But the earthquake activity I'd say looks pretty standard. The deformation data has been more um, informative, and this is the main predictive tool that they're using right now in terms of forecasting when the next eruptive episode is going to take place. So if we look at this here, we have the end of episode 18, just right on the edge of the graph, inflation resuming. So the ground rising as more magma is pushed into the system. That gets close to about four micro radians of tilt. And then that kicks off this eruption on May 1st, which was episode 19. Uh, and then more inflation occurring, episode 20, 21, 22, and right now we're headed our way up and we're getting close to that threshold for episode 23. So you can see each eruptive phase doesn't always match exactly the same uh, peak uh, point here, but it's pretty close. It's somewhere between two to four micro radians of tilt seems to be uh, what it takes to get back to uh, and eruptive or fountaining the fountaining phase of each episode there's some little perturbations in the data here you can see there's you know inflation but then there's a little bit of a, a deflationary drop here just for a few hours or so and then things pick back up hard to know what those mean um, lots of variables that could be considered maybe it's something like as magma is causing the ground to rise maybe some of the magma rising into the system finds some fracture maybe a micro earthquake allows magma to move into some new zone uh, and so you might get as that magma spreading out laterally or injecting itself into other spaces in the subsurface you might see a bit of a deflationary signal at the surface before things resume but the overall trend is there and this has been again the main uh, predictive tool that they're using to uh, forecast these eruptions. So I think the, the big question a lot of folks would have would be, well, how long is this going to last? Like how, how much longer can we go um, 
with this type of behavior. And I think it could go for the rest of the year. It could go longer. Uh, we could, how many episodes will there be? Will it end in the twenties? Will it go fifties? Will we go to triple digits? Um, I think anything's on the table, but I think likely we'll, we're likely to see small changes, right? There could be uh, a larger earthquake somewhere along the south flank that changes the plumbing system and the dynamics and the conduits. We There's a number of things that could happen in the subsurface uh, or events that could take place that could change the dynamics of this this eruption, eruptive phase and then take it in some other direction. Uh, maybe a, an eruption in a different area, maybe different eruption dynamics, maybe longer periods of time between those eruptive phases. But right now there's a well-established conduit. The magma is continuing to rise. The magma sits uh, below, just below the surface for a period of time as more magma, gas-rich magma rises into it. That pressurizes the system. And once there's sufficient gas pressure in the system, that initiates the, 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 the fountaining phase of each eruption. And so I'll keep monitoring this as best I can. Uh, if you're there or going there, enjoy it. It's spectacular. Um, these are really, amazing and very tourist friendly eruptions right now uh and so I, I will try to do a better job of not uh being complacent and taking these eruptions for granted because they are really spectacular and so we should probably give them a little bit more scrutiny uh but with that i'll go ahead and wrap up this update and we'll see you next time take care folks